human, you have bias. Just like we breathe, we have bias. It's part of who we are. When it becomes completely unconscious, we have no idea how it's affecting our behavior. I see you, I make a quick judgment about you as a person. Depending on my stereotypes about what somebody like you in your role should look like or could look like. No one really feels like they're biased. And it's not that they're self-aggrandizing at all. It's no different to not having the machinery to do you know, two math tasks at once. We don't feel biased because we actually can't process if we're being biased or not in real time. We want to create a playing field that is level for everyone. The challenge is we tend to think about our own behavior as somehow more fair and free of bias than it is. Good morning. Well, a new study shows people don't take hurricanes as seriously if they have a female name. And the consequences of underestimating them can be deadly. I talked to a lot of voters who said, yes, I feel comfortable voting for a woman, but just not Hillary Clinton. She's too shrill, she's too loud. All of the signifiers are connected to the way that researchers look at gender bias and discrimination. Almost every woman that becomes a firefighter knows that we are held to a different standard, a higher standard, if you will. You really have to work just as hard, if not harder, than the guys to perform. You don't want to mess up ever or make a mistake because you're kind of carrying it for the rest of the women. Some people don't even know what the term is. They say, fire, what are we supposed to call you? You know, firefighter is the term for a man or a woman. My experience may be similar to a lot of women in technologies and maybe in the workplace in general, which is like, I feel like I was pretty clueless about a lot of the gender issues in my 20s. And it wasn't until my 30s that I think I started to realize like, wow, there is actually a lot more bias than I thought. It's not an even playing field. I, I would like to know why the last associate producer before me made $50 a week more than I do. Oh, because he was a man. <laughs> Without stereotyping what men and women think, oftentimes men will make a decision for a woman without even asking the woman. For instance, if there's a new opportunity for a promotion, it might require longer hours or travel, and they just assume, well, she wouldn't want that position because she just had a baby, or she's got two young kids, or her husband has a big job and travels. People think they're doing the right thing, but it actually is working against you know, your career opportunities. We have news tonight about women in the workplace. The hard fact is that women run only 4% of companies in the Fortune 500, and a new study shows almost twice as many women as men say they've been turned down for a job because of their sex. It is hard to break out as a woman. It is very hard. But there's so much about bias that's self-perpetuating. And we do it to ourselves. People do it to us and we take false signals of I'm not good enough or whatever and then bias becomes a label. And that's, that, doesn't, that doesn't give us a solution. There are, are two good reasons for anyone to try to figure out how to make more women or racial minorities or other groups that traditionally have had less success uh, more successful. That's one is it's just the right thing to do, and two is you can make more money. I think those are both valid. We have study after study after study documenting that diverse teams are more productive, are more creative, that companies that have higher rates of gender diversity, 15% financially outperform others, but that more than doubles to 35% financial outperformance when you add racial and ethnic diversity. Whether it's an investment decision or a business decision you're making within your corporation, you have to believe that a diverse set of opinions or knowledge base around the world gives you a better world perspective, gives you access even to a bigger audience. When you have a room full of only men who generally have the same experience trying to solve a problem, you will not get an answer that is nearly as robust as when you have a room with a super diverse group of people who are all passionate about solving that same problem. You just won't. To get there, we need to take a deeper look at organizational climate and culture. The problem with them is that we made them. And in making them, we can pattern our own biases right into them, and suddenly they take on a life of their own. 
I don't think we can ever fix bias in perception, right? I think asking somebody how to be mindful of changing their perception, and even with good intentions, that's very difficult. I do think we can introduce software and maybe other interventions that help make sure that the content that's put out in the world in the first place really minimizes the chances of bias. It's very tempting for all of us to want to work with people who are just like us and who we'd be comfortable hanging out with or want to have a beer with. But what that means is I'm creating a cocoon of yes around me. But if I can think a little bit further and say, instead of hiring someone for a culture fit, I want to hire them for a culture contribution. And that culture contribution might be greatest if they are different from me. There's a world of difference between your intentions and your impact. I'm not questioning whether somebody has good intentions. I'm helping them understand the impact of their behavior.